Single parenting isn't easy. We understand. Most parents don't plan to go it alone, but you can still make the most of this journey for your children and yourself. In fact, if you and your family are on that journey, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Single Parent Advocate Community and to our podcast. And here are your hosts, Single Parent founder Stacy Poitras, broadcast journalist, single dad and friend, Daryl Moody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Single Parent Advocate Podcast. I am Daryl Moody, joining you from my home in Orlando, Florida. Stacy Poitras, the Single Parent Advocate, she joins us from those beautiful SPA studios there at Venture X Louisville, or is it Louisville? I'm from Florida, Louisville. Louisville, the realm at Castle Hills. Stacy, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing great, Daryl. It's Friday. It's a beautiful day, and we're very excited just to be back together with you again. It's great, man. We're here in, here in Orlando. We had a a cold front come through overnight, so it's a, a beautiful 80 degrees, and uh, we're not going to touch the 90s for at least four or five more days. So it is. It's just perfect here for the weekend. How's Dallas? all the alligators are happy? Well, the alligators would be happy if we got more rain. We haven't had <laughs> much rain lately. It's a little dry for the alligators. They prefer when it's when it's real soupy and muddy and all that. But uh, how are things in Dallas? Good. It's be- like I said, it's really beautiful. We we are past the rain. We had a two two weeks of you know overcast and rain, and today it just was like, oh, you know, just beautiful. And then um, yeah, it's been a very yeah, busy to- week. I had to anchor uh, at WDBO this week, uh, uh, Wednesday morning, and, and we had a story about some severe weather going through Dallas, hail and, and pretty strong winds and that sort of thing. So it's spring, though. That's, you know, it's that time of year, right? Yeah. Tornado tunnel around here, you know, Oklahoma and Texas and North Texas particularly. Sometimes we get that kind of stuff. We had some tornado watches and stuff like that, but um, some folks had some major hail in their uh vehicle like windows one week mm-hmm. and then uh but hopefully we're past the all of that and, love those events yeah no no they're not fun like literally like hail like sure big as your eyeball and bigger so mm-hmm. we just hopefully we're past that yeah so let's catch the uh listeners and viewers up on the mother's day banquet from last week uh how did that go for you guys it was so fun you know uh gateway dallas church uh, really, really stepped up, provided a really wonderful meal. We had the fish, fish sticks comedy troupe there, and they made funnies and did all kinds of improv. We had uh, home decor and beautiful um, items for the moms that came. We had, um, you know, just a really, really nice time where we could get together, honor our moms and we were able to nominate a few of them who are going through some particularly pickled times uh, to an organization that may help them in addition for some duress relief, which I'm super grateful for that also. And um, we're moving on to planning Father's Day and back to school. And it's going to be very back to school is probably one of our largest outreaches. And so getting a jump start on that right now is you know, front of my mind. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, August is coming right around the corner. It's like right. Even right as school ends, we all start really leaning in on back to school already. And people are like, Stacy, why are you working on back to school? And I'm like, well, if I don't, then you won't be very happy with what you get. Right. <laughs> you exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, well, we'll, I tell you, we'll talk more about that effort toward the end of the show, but if folks want to, uh, catch up on everything that you're doing singleparentadvocate.org single single parent advocate on facebook and instagram uh let's talk about mother's day i know your son is in hawaii but uh you got to spend some time with loved ones i'm sure well what i did honestly daryl uh, had a great uh time texting with my son um you know and then eventually that turned into a conversation so i was super excited to hear his voice um, did you get a, did you get FaceTime though? No, I didn't get FaceTime. No, I didn't get FaceTime, but that's okay. You know, he's uh, on the big island, you know, where the volcano is. And so, uh, you know, I was lucky to get reception <laughs> on sure. Mother's Day, but we did. We had a great talk and we're making plans for me to come down and see him in September. And uh, so that's all, you know, really positive. And then um, 
you know, I have a hobby. I, I dance. And so after I had a great conversation with my son, I went to the dance studio and I danced for two or three hours and that felt great. And it was a good mom's day. Oh, and awesome. a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, who's kind of like a second cousin, he took me to Mother's Day brunch after church. So I got church, I got brunch, I got to talk to my son, I got to do something I love. It was like perfect day. So you got fed completely, fed emotionally, fed spiritually, fed fed physically. Yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. I uh I so so I had my kids last weekend, but of course it was Mother's Day, so I wanted them to spend the day with their mom. So what we did for her was we went and I let both kids pick out flowers for her and let them each pick out a card. Uh, and then I'd offered to her because there's a diner right around the corner from where she lives. I'd offered to her we would pick up breakfast on the way and I drop the kids off at breakfast since I can't give her breakfast in bed. You know, it's as close as I could get. Uh, she said, we'll let the kids decide what they want. So we went to Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme. Oh. And uh, got her a dozen donuts. And apparently everybody and their brother in Orlando had the same idea to get mom Krispy Kreme donuts for Mother's Day. So that took a while. Um, so I took them to their mom's house and they spent the day with her. I then went and picked up my mom and uh, we drove up to the villages, which you may be familiar with. It's the world's largest retirement community. It's, it's ridiculous. These folks have everything. So my sister lives kind of, you know, the villages was kind of between my house and my sister's house up in Ocala. So uh, my mom and I met my sister and her kids for Mother's Day and uh, had a really nice uh, lunch there on a, on a golf course there in the villages and uh, spent about three plus hours in the car with my mom. So it was good to it was good to trap her for some good quality time. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I had a great talk with my stepmom. Uh, we had, you know, really, really good talk. And um, I called my mother-in-law and, you know, sh she was doing really good, you know, checked in with my own moms. You know, and I was wondering the neat things that happened at Gateway was um, somebody brought their mom with them, you know, not only mm -hmm. just for themselves, but to honor their mom. And it was really awesome. neat. We just spoiled her too, you know, and so it was just, an, you know, what I really wanted was, you know, to honor the honor the tradition of honoring our parents, you know, and whether you're a mom, a grandma, a dad, you know, whatever your role is in raising kids on your own, uh, you know, let's honor it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure, and I'm sure there are, uh, you know, a lot of surrogate moms out there that uh, should certainly get their dues on Mother's Day as well. Yes. You don't have to you don't have to be a birthing person to celebrate uh, to celebrate Mother's Day. That's, That's for right. Sure. You know, they say it's you know, it's anybody can be a father, but it takes somebody special to be a dad. I think it's the same way with being a mother versus a mom. Oh, like it's right. Well, so coming uh, up for Father's Day, we're going to have to be thinking there. Uh, are... Yeah. And I'm I'm excited because uh, this year Father's Day falls on June 20th, which is also my oldest daughter's birthday. So it's our day together. So we're going to we're going to do something special. Double trouble. Yeah. So uh, let's get into the meat of today's show, the topic that we really wanted to talk about. Now, I, I as you know, Stacey, I do a podcast called Not in the Mood with Daryl Moody, uh, where I cover a variety of topics from social media to single parenting. That's how we got connected. Uh, I, t I talk about uh, this week, I did two podcasts, one on cryptocurrency and one on cybersecurity. Uh, but what I try to avoid at all cost is politics. Politics and religion. Those are two things that I will do uh, just about anything to not talk about on the air. Cause just because it's, you know, you just bash you the people over the head with your opinion. And so you decided that this week, that's what we were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you and I came up with this idea together. And, and, and the idea was, you know, uh, how do you, as far as politics is concerned, how do you navigate, you know, one parent's politics versus the other parent's politics. But but as far as religion is concerned, uh, you know, my kids are still little. What's a good age to introduce your faith to them? How How's the best way to do that? Um, so what do you want to do first, politics or religion? Let's do politics. Let's get it off the table. Politics it is. Okay. So uh, full disclosure, I lean libertarian. I'm fairly conservative fiscally, but I believe... You know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, people ought to be able to do whatever the heck they want. So 
Uh, and what's funny is my my the girl's mom, uh, when we got together 10 years ago, she was fairly moderate. Uh, and it was funny over the 10 years that we were together, I felt like she leaned more and more right every year. And, to, you know, she would she would say things that I felt were, fair, you know, even more conservative than me. And I would I would say, hey, yeah, you're leaning kind of right there. You might fall over there. Be careful. You know what I mean? So I thought that was kind of funny. But since we've since we've separated, my kids report to me now that she uh, she is, is now a progressive. And uh, and, and you know, uh, it's funny, you know, because of me being in the media and, and in the news business, I watch a lot of news. Therefore, by default, my kids are subjected to watching a lot of news. So it's funny. Uh, you know, what they report back to me about mom's politics versus my politics. Um, you know, what, how, how do you how do you get into politics with your son? Because I know your 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 son's dad isn't quite as involved. Yeah, no, he, he's not involved at all. But, um, you know, I would always say, um, you know, let's be aware of what's going on now. I also, and I've mentioned this before, would also have neutral male role models involved in his life, you know, where we could all talk about these types of things. And in our family, um, we leaned conservative for sure. And, um, you know, it ended up being a talk about like, definitely you need to vote. You need to register to vote. I'm going to go vote. You can come with me and stand, you know, in line, wait in the car, play your video games, whatever. But, you know, we my conversation with Chris was more about let's be good citizens. I didn't talk about you must decide this. You must decide that, even though I do have some passion points. Uh, I was more centered about let's be good citizens let's be good members of the community respect the process so to speak yeah and and uh, like you know you, you need to vote you need to you know be aware of what's going on around you don't just you know be under a rock and let things just happen you know that's not really uh a good plan you know because uh, you know the first time i ever kind of really leaned into politics somebody told me you know um you can't complain if you don't use your vote you know like oh one of my favorite lines and so that to me was more i didn't i didn't try to push my re religious or political agenda which sometimes those get crisscrossed even though they're not supposed to um i just wanted him to be a good citizen and to be aware to be awake, to be involved, you know, at whatever level, you know, maybe you're just aware and you vote, but maybe you volunteer periodically, or maybe, you know, you just attend something. I don't, you know, I, you, know you just don't know. But I did take him, uh, one of the highlights of introducing Chris to politics was taking him to Washington, D.C. with some friends, was another single parent family. And we went all around uh, all the monuments and we looked at the, um, Library of Congress and, you know, made sure that we went to our representative's office and we have pictures of us and Pete Sessions, you know, and our stuff. And yeah, no, um, we, we did that. We did the, the Washington, D.C. family vacation in 2017 as well. And then um, later, you know, I took them down in uh, to the Texas Capitol, Austin. We went and toured the Capitol. And then also um, in Texas, I am technically considered a daughter of the Texas Republic because I had a um, relative die in the Alamo. His name was oh, wow. Benjamin Milam. Yeah, that's pretty I know. Texan. <laughs> I know. I'm not. And so I really wanted to take him to the Alamo and say, okay, this is where the doors are, you know, and the doors are displayed where the sniper shot him and he fell. You know, and um, so Chris, you know, was exposed. And so maybe what I did was I brought history to life. And then as we went, we would talk about today, you know, and things. But I never said, you know, you need to vote this way or you need to vote that way. I believe... 
I was uh, transparent with him about how I felt about voting, you know, and I shared that with him. Um, but now I, I just, you know, he's 21 and in Hawaii and the politics there are probably very different than they are here. And it's very mm -hmm. early in his adulting journey for me, you know, and so I haven't really broached the topic, Daryl, to think about it, to talk about, you know, what's what's his vote look like today? What's his political stance look like? I, you know. Well, you know, because of my job, I mean, I, you know, I interview members of Congress fairly regularly and my kids have actually, you know, I've interviewed members of Congress while, you know, at Target or or on a bike ride. You know what I mean? So my kids, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, I, I'll i admit I am a little bitter and jaded and, I, and I'll be the first person to tell you they're bad people in both parties. And I think both parties are equally responsible for the for the current state of the country. But uh you know, it's it, I, I'm curious to see what will rub off on each kid and, you know, will they will they will they uh, adopt my tendencies and leanings or will they adopt their mothers? So I'm I'm curious to see how it works out. But I mean, as far as I like your neutrality, I admire that, Stacey. I don't know if I am <laughs> disciplined enough to do that. Uh, and, and, and here lately, I've had a lot to be fired up about. So uh <laughs> Well, here's I, I, here's here's the thirty thousand foot the thirty thousand foot thing that I you know if I could spill some neutrality on you, is you know things change and things shift and the topic of the day burns hot, and then it gets cold and then we get a new hot topic, and um, you know that's why we have to stay involved, vote our vote our hearts, you know try sure. really hard not to be deceived but also don't sow resentment, don't sow distrust, don't sow fear, right? Because anytime we lead with those things, we're leading a divisive conversation versus saying, okay, I'm gonna try to understand where you're coming from, even though it's not comfortable for me, I can see it's comfortable for you. So maybe we can try to figure out, you know, how to still be, in the same family, <laughs> you know? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, as you said, your, your son is a young adult, so you're going to see what path he takes. My kids have, have a ways to go. Uh, let's transition now to, to religion, the other hot topic of the day. I, and, 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 th and, and this is why I wanted to tackle this as a subject today. I, I don't attend a church with my kids yet. I think they're still a little too young for that. But I grew up uh, in a private Christian school run by a, a Southern Baptist church. So I have a Southern Baptist upbringing. And the cool thing about graduating from the same school that you went to kindergarten in is you, you acquire these lifelong friends. And, and thankfully for me, I'm in my 40s, and I still have a lot of these friends that are still in my life and fairly regularly. One of, one of these guys, uh, my buddy... Greg was over for a barbecue a few weeks ago and he was in the living room and happened to find a book that I read to the kids every day. I would hold it up to show the viewers, but we tried that and it didn't work well with the virtual background. So uh, the name of the book is Jesus Calling Bible Storybook. It's basically just a, a collection of Bible stories written at a child's level. And it's, you know, there's the little story. And then at the end, there's, it quotes a, 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 a scripture, a, pa a passage of scripture, and then, and kind of, you know, puts that in a more relatable uh, way. So Greg takes a look at the book and he's like, Oh, okay. All right. That's good. I, you know, my, I was just talking to my mom the other day who I know too, and, and, you know, helped raise me just as much as my mom helped raise him. And he said, Karen was asking me if you take the girls to church. And I said, well, you know, I feel like at seven and five, the seven-year-old could probably make it through a sermon. The five-year-old probably not so much. Uh, so I'm not quite comfortable taking the kids to a church and attending regularly just yet. And I know you say that they have, they have childcare programs and they'll take the kids and keep them busy while you're, but I I'm in the news business and I don't trust anybody. So, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing that just yet. So I told Greg, I said, you know, this is my way of sharing the gospel with them at this young age. And, and, and thankfully, it's not all foreign to them because they, in their daycare that they started off at, uh, it was run by the Methodist Church in downtown Orlando. So, so they had 
a foundation of knowledge. And now I'm kind of filling in gaps and sharing new stories with them, but we're really enjoying it. But uh, am I doing this right? Am I going at this the right way? So I like the idea about how you and I kind of compare. So I'll tell you my personal journey with with uh, with my faith. Well, I, and... I told you I you you I'm using you as my as my parenting counselor. So like, <laughs> I tell you what I do, and then I did I do it right or wrong, and then you know I I come away from every one of these episodes a little better. So so teach so me. So right or wrong, you know. So I grew up in the Methodist church when I was really really young, and my parents put me in the in the um, you know the daycare, and then later you know I would attend, and then we went through a phase where they were kind of agnostic or my mom, you know, said she was a atheist for a while. And then later on, we went to the Episcopal church and I was there for a few years until I, um, really kind of started getting my own legs. And, um, I decided to go, um, really a different direction when I was in college and I went more Protestant and I joined my uh, college boyfriend's church. I was a, a member of the worship team and just really every, our life was school and church. And I was very, very happy with that lifestyle. For me, um, I've even written poetry about my faith. You know, my faith walk has been very, very uh, deep. And um, so, Flash forward to, you know, now I'm a single parent raising my son on my own. I didn't have to balance, you know, what his father would have done. I just had to do my best. And in in the Christian scriptures, the, the thing I hung my hat on, uh, and, and uh, this is very personal for me, I know, and it, it is for many single parents out there out there, particularly single mothers, uh, God is a father to the fatherless and he's a husband to the widow. And I can tell you, um, when Chris was very, very young, he was on my hip and I'm leading worship and we're in kids ministry. And then, wow. uh, you know, I had to do the motions to the songs and I couldn't put him down because he didn't want to leave Man. my hip, you know? So it's like, okay, come on, let's do that. And he's a baby, baby, you know? And then um, later, you know, I moved. I had to move into a smaller home. I couldn't afford the home that w we had. And um, checked him in and had to learn to trust a new children's ministry. And it was a much bigger church, even though I lived in a much smaller house. And so I would join the choir and I was in the choir at that church and he was in the children's ministry. And so for me, I, uh, they had a program for people that were part of the choir called worship parents and worship parents were people that come alongside pe people who need to be in service and serving a lot. And they would, would help connect the children's ministry to that person while they were serving. So I was involved in single parent ministry there. I was involved in the choir there. And so that the church came alongside me and my son to teach us, you know, hey, this is kind of the path, you know, when when a child is, uh, you know, not in first grade, if they're first grade or younger, we keep them in, in uh, the children's ministry. It wasn't just child care. It was children's ministry. And they had programs and li really invested into the lives of these children. And then uh, after first grade, the worship parents would come and sit with them while I was in the choir and they were wonderful people, very sweet uh, couple that were international ministers. They would go to Africa and uh, help create uh, relief and schools in Africa. And so they even sewed into me, you know, things that I got stuck on, you know, and ended up being such a wonderful, by making myself open to what the system was in my church, I was able to understand uh, more. Uh, than just, oh, I'm going to put him in day, 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 daycare in the church. You know, I'm going to have a partner in raising my son in the way of faith. And, you know, for us, that was all the way up until he, just like you, maybe 
um, a similar experience. He was five when we started at that church, and he we were at that church until he graduated from high school and then took his life in a different direction, which is common for young adults. But um, so he now has a direct relationship with this neutral male role model that was his Sunday school teacher. He sells, uh, he's actually a Lego star on YouTube now, <laughs> Big John. And, uh, you know, we, he followed me in uh, becoming somebody who would sing and worship and be a part of the drama outreaches of the, the church and the student mm-hmm. ministry. And um, it was completely different. Just, I did what I, what I felt was good for both of us. And um, to me, I, I don't know of anything that could have happened any better because he's got his own relationship with God now. And uh, he's married and they both, you know, uh, I don't think they go to church in Hawaii, but I know that they have faith and the relationship with God. And um, I'm, gosh, if that's what I achieved, uh, or what God achieved through me or through our church mm-hmm. or how, whatever the right way to say that is, you, you know, the foundation. Oh, and, 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 you know, I always, always welcome the idea that, okay, this is our faith. This is the faith that I have, you know, and, and had, uh, but you know, um, Eric, he's Catholic and, and you said you're more kind of Baptist Methodist and I've been kind of more Baptist Methodist, but let's say it's something different. The main thing is that we want to build a line of communication between our children and their higher power, which uh, it, in my case is God and Jesus, but there are other people who communicate that in a different fashion in a different way and feel, still feel close to God. And so who am I to say, oh, you have to stay in this lane, you know, um, there's certain discussions I think that you can get into about, okay, let's say we're all believers. What lane is the right lane for you to be in? And I've got to lean in and tell you, Daryl, what I believe is whatever one makes you close to the Lord, whatever one makes your heart glow, whatever one makes you feel like you've got a, a, a line of communication. Well, God. we, we pray, we pray every night. I pray separately with Claire and then I pray with Elise. Uh, you know, whenever we hear about somebody who's got, you know, bad circumstances, Elise says, we'll, we'll pray for them, you know, that sort of thing. So I know that they get that. I mean, we talk about Jesus, we talk about salvation and, and what that means. Uh, I, you know, we talked this week, we talked a little bit about heaven versus hell and how to go to heaven and, and how, you know, how you end up in hell. Um, so, you know, I, 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 like I said, they're seven and five, so we've got a lot of time still. But, you know, for me, I'm just trying to trying to get them in that direction because, you know, their mother isn't doesn't, you know, isn't involved in a church or that sort of thing. So just, they're not going to get that influence from her. So it's important to me to instill it in the kids early, you know. Well, I would I would I would just say, you know, maybe that's a thing you guys can do together, a tradition that they have with you to go to church. Um, if, well, that's if the we, plan. We'll get there. Yeah, if 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 you'd like, if as as their father, you're saying, hey, you know, I'm not comfortable putting them in children's ministry right now. I'd rather them sit with me for a little bit until I kind of get the lay of the land. But you know, in children's ministry, they make friends, lifelong friends, just like you did, just like my son did. Yep. And so you don't want to keep that from them either. You know, by uh, like you know being overprotective. You well, know. no, my, my, my hesitation, I just, I want to get to know the church first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be able to go to, you know, a half dozen uh, services with both kids. So I, I'm just trying to get them to where we, to where we can do that. And then that's the plan. We'll, we'll find the right church for us. I think you've got the right heart. I think, you know, hey, let's go as a family first, figure out what we all like, and then maybe we go check it out. You know, maybe they have a kids ministry barbecue or something where or you know you know one of the things that just popped in my head <laughs> is you, Sunday? Could, you could volunteer to be a sunday school like 
you could I mean you could if you found a place you like what what's wrong with you going and saying I want to be a part of the kids ministry and well, help sure. you know do stuff there and then you're part of the team Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, and I would, I would that love the... for my kids to grow up around a church the way I grew up around a Christian school. My parents weren't as religious. So I, you know, I wasn't necessarily, it wasn't reinforced at home. You know what I mean? So it was, it was and I'm, I'm grateful that I had that influence as a child and, you know, into my teenage years, because I didn't get it at home. Uh, I mean, I, I say all the time, I wouldn't be the man that I am were it not for my education that I received at Ocala Christian Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. So I am grateful for that for sure. But, um, you know, I say you find a place that's got a great kids ministry and give it a try. You know, um, the only thing we can do is share uh, our hearts with with um, tolerance, right, and patience and kindness and mercy and grace. Right. And um if we don't share our hearts, uh, that's leading from fear. That's not leading from love. Yeah. And uh, that's not what God would have us do, no matter what uh, your faith walk is. Leading sure. from fear is not usually uh, endorsed, right? Mm -hmm. Leading from love is, which is, I want to share with you what I believe, what works for me, and I wanna help you find out what works for you and make sure I help you build that pipeline to your higher power. Well, let's look ahead to next week, Stacy. What do you guys have planned there for Single Parent Advocate? I know you talked about gearing up for back to school, Father's Day is in, in less than a month or so. What do you have cooking? So it was a fun talk this last week with all of the, the girls that are on the steering committee here. Uh, we debated bowling for Father's Day, um, fun, a fun and wacky picnic, you know, where we did fun races and crazy races. And uh, in Texas, it gets really hot in mid June. It, it gets, you I've know, where it's that. 104, <laughs> you know, I've, even I've heard higher. That. And so, you know, it's kind of like, okay, inside, outside, I don't know. And, and then there's also, like we talked about at the beginning of the program, all the rain that can kind of come and it'll rain and then it get really, really hot. And then you feel like you're in Florida. So yes. nobody likes that. It messes up our Texas hairdos. We can't deal with that. <laughs> well, actually, actually it would help. It would make it bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you, you would, the, the Texan women would love our humidity. <laughs> uh, usually, the, you know, our hair gets pretty mousy in the in the humidity, so it just like sticks to our heads, and we don't feel cute anymore. So, we decided we we're probably gonna do a bowling like indoor thing, and we're gonna partner with a, a local group, maybe main event, and so uh, and we'll probably just bring the whole gang in. You know, we have some single dads that are you know part of our community, but not as many as a single mom. So we want it to be a bigger celebration, and so we're looking at that. And then we're working on uh, scholarships for single parents that are in college. We like to give book scholarships to single parents in college. So anybody that's in college that needs a little help with their books, um, we do not pay the money directly to the individual. We pay the money to the university. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they can email me, stacy.poitras at singleparentadvocate.org. And uh, we can get you an application. Uh, we will be giving those book scholarships out by the end of the summer so that uh, we can help with uh, book expenses in the fall, fall semester. Awesome. And, yeah. And then awesome. after that, you know, it's Katie by the door. It's time for everybody to start donating money to help underwrite backpacks. We give away anywhere from 300 to 400 backpacks every summer. Uh, they are filled to the brim with what kids need. And uh, it usually costs us about 25 or $30 per backpack. We try to shop, you know, and get all the deals here. So, you know, it's a little bit less expensive than if a parent went yeah. shopping for themselves. So I've, I've covered, I've covered those events, the, 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 the back to school backpack with all the gear. It's, it's, uh, it's tremendous. It's, and it's so important to those kids. So, uh, yeah. And we're going to have snow cones this year locally. Uh, we'll be back at Gateway Dallas again. And uh, so 
Super, super important. Everybody hop online, sponsor four or five kids, and help us go shopping, because that's going to be how we spend our summer here with Single Parent Advocate, is shopping for school supplies and making sure everybody's got all that they need to go back to school safely. Uh, looks like it's going to be in person, you know, so we want to make sure everybody's got what they need. A word of advice. If you want your back-to-school backpacks to be the most popular back-to-school backpacks in all of Dallas, you need to put poppets in the bags. Pop you know it. what a poppet is? I ha- I do. Yes. I think the kids would love that. <laughs> I'll put that down on the shopping list. <laughs> and if folks want to contribute to that effort, they can do that at singleparentadvocate.org? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, Stacy, another another episode in in the books. Uh you know, I, I, every one of these is is an educational experience for me. I thank you for your for your insights and 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 you know, any closing thoughts for us? Well, I would just leave you and everybody with the thought, you know, um, topics that we don't tread with our kids just because they're difficult or complicated in the real world leaves them floundering. And, and if someone you don't else have, will. If you don't have anything to offer except for your own experience, you know, make sure that you lead your experience with a position of love and not fear and openness and try to make sure that you're always making a place to be a good citizen of both heaven and earth. Fantastic. Good stuff. Well, folks, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you for listening every week. Uh, If you're listening on Audible or Spotify or any of the other platforms where you listen to podcasts, I ask that you subscribe to the Single Parent Advocate podcast so you'll be the first to know when the new episodes come out. And uh, we will talk to you again next week. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.